Y'all, it's season two of Quarantine But Cute. I am your host, Lauren Aparicio. We are back at it. Apparently, we still need this show. Uh, but the good news is, this season is going to be fire. And I just want to start off by saying that I... You know, I don't script this show. It's completely unscripted. I do some bullet points here and there, and I was trying to think of, like, something cute and quirky to come up with. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I'm me. This is who I am. I'm so excited to be here. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been watching this show for almost a year. So much has happened since then. So much growth in myself. So much growth in... um the community that we're building. And I'm so excited to introduce my first guest of the year. She's been on the show before. She is a life coach specializing in transitions and structure. Her company is called Moving Bravely. She's a rock star. She's a rock star. So I'm so excited to talk about what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, so I just want to welcome her right now, Lauren McLamory. She's coming on up. This is Quarantine But Cute. Hi! You are just looking fabulous as usual. Wow, girl, you, the shaggy cut is in. Girl, let me tell you, I want to give a big shout out real quick to Amber Cassiano. She is my girl. She's an ATL. She just opened her own studio. She was at another salon for years. And then I haven't got my nails and feet done in over a year because I Obviously, I'm trying to do the right thing, but I just, I hit a breaking point and I, I did it safely and I got the bling. Beautiful. Just <laughs> How are absolutely you? beautiful. I'm good. Yeah, I'm great too. I got my hair done also. I got it. Like, I know. Trim. I'm like, I have I'm these really... crazy bright lights, Lauren, and I'm like, <laughs> like, this is my studio. Yes, I am trying to grow I out the gray. It. So I am really loving this, you know, embracing the, the gift that quarantine has given me, which is let it go. Be natural. Great. So, yes. Oh my gosh. Well, you thank you. Look good, though. Stop. I know. Let's yeah, just do so. this the whole time. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love us. Okay, but I am so excited. I'm. I'm really glad to be here. I'm so happy to have you. So today, everybody watching, we really wanted to touch base on three things. We wanted to talk about morning rituals. We are going to be chatting about imposter syndrome. Um, that's a big one. And mm. I'm also, uh, in the clubhouse world now, this new app that's sucking the life out of me and giving me life at the same time. Um, <laughs> thanks to you, Lauren. Thanks um, <laughs> for nominating to me, me to be in this incredible, um, space with people who are just phenomenal. Um, but we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome, morning rituals. We're going to talk about overwhelm and how we deal with that. But I really would love for you to introduce what you do, a little bit of who you are for people who have just seen or just seen my show and meeting you for the first time. And hi, to oh. everybody watching. Let us know where you're watching from. I know. I've seen a couple of familiar faces. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to see all the friendly faces that I know. And I've actually met some of you on Clubhouse, which is great. Um, I am, I'm Lauren McLamory. I am a social worker, uh, by day and a uh, women's coach by evenings and weekends. Uh, so I, I am the typical person who works all of the time and I am just so excited to uh, be able to serve in both capacities right now. Um, so I work in a mental health nonprofit. I am a clinical director, uh, program director. I have, um, leadership experience on the executive level so I coach women through um, moving into really big changes and big things. And so I, uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. We will peel back the layers because if, you, if you ask me who I am, you're going to find out why I am. <laughs> and so <laughs> I think that's where you, you won't really find about like what I do or how I do it, but you will find out why I exist and what my purpose is. So um, yeah, and I really am excited about this topic because I, I keep hearing and keep seeing and keep, you know, all these questions about, um, you know, of course, first of the year, talking about morning routines. Everybody's got to like is prescribing morning rituals, morning routines, right? Ah! Like that's just the new year. It's a lot oh. though. Sometimes it's like, yo, hold on. I know. So I'm definitely glad we're going to cover that. I'm definitely glad we're going to cover overwhelm because there's a lot of us, myself included. I'm on the front lines. We are burned out, and I see some of my friends who are on here who are nurses and frontline workers. We are so tired. Um, we're overwhelmed, and for for once. Um, you know, similarly to the grief journey, 
I can't really like solve that for myself. Like it is just what it is. And so it's just really hard to sit in that. And then the imposter syndrome, such an important conversation. So I'm, I'm, and if anybody's at, like watching and they have specific questions, please, please, please type them in. We answer. This is a conversation, even though it's just the two of us. Um, that's what yeah, the show's we, for. We love that. And Lauren and I have become really close. We, I, I don't know if I found her, she found me, doesn't even matter, but it was through Instagram and we're buds now and I just, it, we admire each other and I love her and, um, you know, she's more of the expert, I would say, as far as um, structure. So I want to talk <laughs> a little bit before we even get into imposter syndrome, because I feel like we're going to go off as soon as we start talking about imposter yes. syndrome and I want to see it in the comments, you know, on clubhouse, you can click your mic when you're clapping here, you can actually use emojis <laughs> and like type in stuff, which is incredible. So we want you guys uh, out there to be interactive. Um, and I need to be more all inclusive. I'm going to stop saying you guys, I want to say you all, Come on, um, you all, come on, uh, folks. she, her, she, her, she, her. Yes. Um, I prefer that. And, I let's get learned a little bit. So let's talk about morning rituals. I kind of like to call it a ritual as opposed yes. to a routine. And let's talk a little bit about what you do with your clients. And then we'll mm -hmm. sort of dive into imposter syndrome and then come back. Well, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, I love this. Oh, Matt. Hey, Matt's clapping. <laughs> what up, girl? Um, so I also I think it's just funny that we just need rituals, right? So like, I, I think that we we of so many people put pressure on us to have morning rituals. And I, I just like to describe like whatever it is you're doing in your daytime, you, you need a, a time of the day where you are going through a, a series of thoughts or a series of things that really rejuvenate you or refresh you. And so it's almost like you need to be doing this at serious, you know, parts of the day throughout your day. Right. So I do prefer, yeah. prefer the morning because I work full time in such a, you know, high capacity, intense capacity. And I also run this business. And so the 5 a.m. hour is just what works for me right now. If I wasn't working full time, oh. would I be waking up at 5 a.m.? No, but it's what works with me totally. in this season right now. And it's before the world wakes up because me, my safe place where I need to start out with, uh, because I am extroverted and I talk to people all day, is I need to be quiet and I need to wake up and be quiet first thing in the morning. So I do think that whatever it is that you're going through, you need to find a pocket of the day where you're quiet. Sometimes it's escaping to your car if you have a bunch of kids or you, you know working and you you just need to escape in your car for a little bit or, and just or like scream in your pillow or <laughs> scream, yeah or if you're yeah um which is so important and i think that um it's we get so caught up in the details of like what i said earlier like being prescribed a morning routine or a morning right. ritual it's really a ritual is such a spiritual experience right yeah. i know you i know you know that like we've talked on that level it's like it's not a prescription and it's not checking the boxes it's really truly a spiritual experience so whatever that does for you some people it's movement i tell people i like to move my mind in the morning not so much my body like i'll move my body throughout the day how do you I move can... your mind in the morning how do you move so, your mind cool i wake up i um <laughs> i review my days so you know me so with those who are watching i plan my day out the day before, like I do a visualization map. I basically go hour by hour and I just visualize how my day should flow, where my energy checks are, where I'm going to be really overloaded and where I'm not. Yeah. And then I plot things in accordingly to do self care or, you know, take breaks or that's my big thing. I don't take breaks. So I plot those in. I very strategically do, but it's visualization. I wake up, I review it. I let that sit. I actually have started a meditation practice. I am proud to say that I actually do it. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, yes, me too. <laughs> I know. Um, totally, totally not what you, like, it's not what you imagine it to be. Again, it is my personal practice, right? Like, and the same yeah. for you. It's not going to look the same as you, but I, I do. I meditate. I don't do it every day. And I you do don't have, best. yeah, you do. If you, whatever, <laughs> like, it's just one of those things. And sometimes it's just me turning on the um, insight timer has like a timer that you yes. can turn on a sound, right? So sometimes it's just the ohm sound while I'm, while I'm reading my daily stoic. So then I read the daily stoic this year is what I'm reading every day. And I, um, so I like jot down thoughts that come with that. And then I read, um, right now I'm reading start with why again by Simon Sinek. And so I read Ooh. something that's really energizing and, and, you know, thought driven. Right. Um, and then I get ready. So it's like, I take care of my mind and my soul first and my spirit first. And then I move into, um, the logistics of the day. 
Someone just said, I feel like planning the day, which I said this too first, Kylie. She said, I feel like planning a day out would give me more anxiety than just going with the flow. So let's explain why you do that. And also yeah. explain that you don't always hit all the marks, but it's a yeah. roadmap. Yes, it is. Um, it's a conversation with yourself. So it's not, it's, I, I think that that's why I, when I say the word structure, you know me, I change my like, how I approach people all the time about what right. I do because it, it hits differently. I am just as yeah. much for the creative and the go with the flow wild spirit as I am for the type A, you know, get it done you kind are, of energy. You are, you balance. And, and I meet people where they are because I am yeah. a social worker and that's what I'm trained to do. So yeah, you don't have to plan it out because guess what? You plan it out. Who's in control? Do you know the future? How do you know the future? If you do, let me know. I want it on the secret because I want to be able to do it. <laughs> But it's just visualization. So it's just, if I do it on pen and paper, you know, the traditional way, maybe it's you just, you know, maybe you sketch, maybe you draw things. Like maybe you draw an intention for your day. Planning does not look like my planning. Although yeah. a lot of people who are like me do really, <laughs> really appreciate it. But it's really just removing this, um, all of that, like to do's, all of that stuff right. that you get overwhelmed with, it puts it in a safe place. Um, so I well, think a lot of people, it just does, whatever that looks like, it's your thing. I think it lifts the fog a little bit. Mm. And I kind of do like, I do like a combo of what Lauren does. And then I would definitely want to really deep dive into imposter syndrome. Um, I have obviously notes in my calendar for my show because I do a lot of stuff. So mm -hmm. if I don't write it down in my notes with alarms or I don't put it in my calendar, like I'm totally screwed. I've missed so many appointments and I'm definitely like type A, but. I think just it's been a very abundant year so far, and I'm so grateful. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I say my grateful, uh, my gratitude every morning. I, I I do my best to hit the floor with my feet and say my gratitudes and get my coffee and write down. Um, uh, Mel Robbins calls it a brain dump. Other people don't like that mm -hmm. word. Uh, whatever you want to say, but basically, I just try to express myself on paper before uh -huh. I get on the phone. But you know, Clubhouse has messed all that up for me, so I'm trying to get back into my ritual. Um, but yeah, someone said, as long as you show up for yourself and that's, that's for damn sure. Yeah. Um, the brave, the brave ones are showing up in the chat here. The people I love who are it. My I, membership. I can tell them, I can, <laughs> I can hear the group coming. I love it. The, the moving bravely group is representing hardcore. And I do want to, I wanted to speak to, um, the, the, like, can't even imagine the day going as planned for me. Like, girl, to the, again, I want to reiterate people who are looking and like listening, you definitely it's definitely just a conversation with yourself. So I was going to ask you, Lauren, before we moved into imposter syndrome, how yep. do you know which systems work for you? How do um, you know? Did you just wake up one day and you're like, oh, I'm perfect. And I know exactly which system works for me. Of course. Uh, no, <laughs> I, <laughs> no I, um, I, I'm still like working out my perfect ritual, but something I'm enjoying is the gratitudes. I do not sleep with my phone in the same room. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big thing. So when my alarm goes off, I can let it ring in the other room, but I still have to get it. I physically have to get up. That's a Mel Robbins thing too. Um, but yes. I, think I, I also was inspired by you planning out your next day. So what I've been doing in my journal is planning out like what my appointments are, physically writing it down. And then in the morning, I'll go back over the day. I'll circle how I feel with her five second journal. And that helps me set my goals, my intentions, my dream team, all this stuff yeah. um, for my side business with Kongan, whatever my acting audition gigs are. And, and like you said, you don't have control. You don't know what's going to pop up, but it's, it's a roadmap. So you don't wake up and you're like, oh, I have so much stuff to do because that is when things I think get a little bit out of control. And someone yes. here is saying, um, uh, hey, it's Nurse Sheena is her mm -hmm. name. I have control issues. I'm type A personality. And when things are out of my control, I get anxiety. So Lauren, do you have any tips mm. for her? Yeah, Sheena, I, I, I met Sheena on Clubhouse, which is really great. Uh, yeah, I work deeply with, with my clients on this. Um, we, in, in my membership community, we, this comes up all the time. I am a type A, I'm a you know yep. control freak. And then I realized that through my control, I was not achieving my purpose or my, you know, a lot of us are service-based or impact-based people. Like that's what we want to do. That's why we're on yeah. these pages. Um, and that's why our audiences are the same. They're service-based people. And we don't realize that by, by clinging and clenching to the control that we are robbing people of their ability to serve and make impact. And so I work through a lot of these beliefs 
we go through limiting beliefs. And I think that uh, I can't speak in general, you know, I, she, Sheena, I'm just now getting to know Sheena and I'd love to speak with you even deeper. You know that. Um, and anyone who's a type A, love to talk to you. And it's just, it's really getting comfortable with the things that you can control and can't control, which plan to be brave, which is my framework. And this visualization process is you're, you're basically seeing it in real time of like, wait, what went right? Where was my energy? Was I tired yeah. at that point? What happened? And then for me, I realized that I, um, I went through grief and grief makes no nothing makes sense after you grieve a parent. You know, I lost a parent at, um, I was 28. My mom died. She was 56. And I was like, why can't I get this done? Or why can't I just feel better? And then I would forget that I'm grieving. So my, my journal or my check-ins, I would see, oh yeah, wait a second, be compassionate with yourself. You're grieving. And so that's just a specific example of where I had to like face the, the music, but I wouldn't have known. I would have in my head, I would have been like, I'm not doing enough. I'm, which we're about to get an imposter syndrome, but I'm not doing yeah. enough. I'm not, I, I, would, I would believe this tape in my head, but with the data in front of me, can't yep. deny it. I am doing enough. And I'm, and I look through it and I do my gratitude, like you said. Okay. But what about, and I love that. And you know, I'm so sorry for your loss. And, and Sheena oh, just I said know. she lost her dad at 28 too. He was 51. I mean, Oh, we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot. Okay. It's, it's a lot and definitely connect with Lauren after this show, because I just adore her. But um, even that, even just talking about it can be overwhelming for somebody, right? Mm. That's the first time they're facing the awareness that something needs to change, right? And stress is an indicator mm. uh, that something needs to change, whether good or bad, right? So here's an example. I've been spending a lot of time on Clubhouse. I love my Clubhouse fam, but it's a healthy addiction. It's still an addiction. <laughs> and so if I don't step away to feed myself, to prep, to stretch, I will spend 15 hours a day on that app. It is like the new Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok all together. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, while you're on and you're going up to say something in a room and you're raising your hand and you're brought up to say, I'm an actor, host, and entrepreneur, you know, now I'm okay with that. But like three, four years ago, mm. me saying I was mm. an actor was like, well, I'm just like acting again. I'm just like trying it out, you know, like, yeah. yeah, but like, I'm not an expert, you know, and I just, I had to start somewhere because when I was a chef, I felt the same way. I remember I got thrown into working for a really big producer. Um, he needed somebody desperately. I was on set. They sort of plucked me from obscurity doing craft service. And they're like, can you cook for this producer? And I was like, uh, okay. So I went <laughs> onto the truck, his, his truck, I cooked whatever. And he's like, will you be my chef? And I was like, no, like I have a crew, I can't just abandon them. <laughs> but like things were going wrong. And yeah. I knew I needed a way out. And I needed I knew that I needed to make more money, even though I was in the union. And it was okay. Like if anybody knows craft services and has been on set, like, we're some of the hardest working people. And don't get paid what we're really deserve. Mm. You know what I mean? What we really deserve. So I knew it was this sort of way out. But I knew he was like, really high maintenance. And so about 30 minutes later, I decided to take the job because I was like, you know what? I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to fake it till I make it. I'm going to figure it out. I'm a good cook. I, I obviously completed the dish. They liked my personality. I'm going to take it. And they were like, Oh my God, you know, cause he was very demanding, but I love him. Um, Joel Silver, incredible chef. I mean, you can Google this stuff, but um, you can Google me. Um, <laughs> I but it. anyway, my point is, is when I got that first check and it said chef on it, I don't know if it felt very earned. Mm. And I didn't go to culinary school. I had worked at Food Network on and off for 10 years in LA and New York um, as an assistant, as an art director, assistant art director, PA. I mean, I did everything. I worked on all the big shows and I learned a lot. And I knew I was a good cook, but to all of a sudden be like a chef for celebrities, like working in the film business was one thing, but working directly cooking for people like that was another. And even though I'm, super I was super grateful at the time I really do think I was present as present as I could be getting that check that said chef on it just felt so uncomfortable and I remember after he left town I, I was kind of left with nothing because I couldn't go back to my craft service crew and uh you know they didn't want anything to do with me they were jealous they were haters you know I had moved up and made a lot of money all of a sudden 
and I didn't really know what to do. So I started my own chef business, but quickly realized I didn't want to be a chef. I didn't mm. want to be a caterer. I didn't want to do anything that I didn't want to do on my own time. I've always been that way. Mm. And that's a privilege to always be that way and be fortunate to even say what I just said. So I recognize that as well. But I remember creating this business, having a horrible partnership with somebody else that I just didn't align with me, but she had clients and she liked me, but I didn't really like her. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. I, and I, but I stayed with her and I stayed with the idea that I'm this chef now that I, I felt like I had to do it to sort of complete something, but it ended up just not bringing me where I wanted to be. And eventually uh, about a year, I think, what was it? About a year and a half later, I moved back to LA um, and completely got out of the food business. And I just like needed a break. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I just needed a break from life. It was so overwhelming. And I had to really readjust my mindset and go, who's Lauren? What the hell does she want to do? And, and why was I so scared to say I was a chef? Like, I remember getting in fights with line cooks. I remember mm. taking a job as a line cook just so I could prove to the other chefs out there <laughs> that I could do it. Mm. Yeah. Because personal chefs are very different than line cooks. Yeah. It's so, it's like, I think that we, we definitely should unpack that. So for, yeah, I, I know that imposter syndrome sounds like something you should, uh, or maybe you could guess what it means, but it really isn't. So I looked it up because I wanted to be like clear just in case somebody's heard it here yeah. for the first time, um, because it'll connect to your story and they'll start to see themes. So imposter syndrome is the uh, persistent inability to believe that one success is, is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. So it's believing that your value as a human being is only derived from the things that you do or have achieved. And so I wow. think that, yeah, like for, for, I don't know, my heart's racing a little bit. Cause I'm like, Oh, oh yeah. I have oh. so many emotions. Keep going. Keep going. So the flaw is not in your humanness and your value. The flaw is in the belief that our value is earned or achieved through work. Welcome to my Ted talk. Let's just Girl, let's just sit in that for a minute because you <laughs> might <Mic> drop. <laughs> um, it's so much like I'm sweating. And I, if anybody else, like I'm going to, you know, feel this. Like the, the flaw is in the belief that our value is earned or achieved through work. That just being human is not enough. That just being a caring person is not enough. I'm like this in the corner. Mm -hmm. um, literally, though, no, all jokes aside, I always defined who I was through work. And so as a freelancer, my whole life, I've been a freelancer since I was 15, you, you all. I'm 30. You are a hardworking individual. You Thank work you. hard as shit. And I work for free a lot. And yeah. I'm not doing that anymore. Um, oh, come on. So, you know, I had to come into my own power. I mean, look, I, I, I've been- You just winked there. at me. You I just have... winked at me. Did I? Yes. You said I had to come into my own power. <laughs> oh, it came over me. And Feel I do have to come into my own power as a, as an actor, but also as a human being who needed to show her vulnerability. Uh, you know, I, I came into my feminism that way. I'm coming more into like my issues of intimacy that way through vulnerability. That's still sort of side conversation. But back to um, freelancing, it's a really hard thing to be a freelancer and find your identity and know what that is. Because I'm a multi-hyphenated individual. I've uh -huh. been that way even before that was a word. So for me, when I would get a gig working behind the scenes, tour production, film production, whatever I was doing, uh, event production, when that job was over and I had nothing to do, no income, what do you think I did? I sat at home and thought I was worthless. Mm-hmm. Yep. I sat at home and was waiting for the next job to define my worth. I put my worth in my work. Mm -hmm. And I how, lost so much from that. I was gonna, how many times, and these, this is questions for people in the, in, you know, commenting, watching, how many times have you shown up early, stayed later, like outwork? I will, I will sh outdo you. I will, out, I will learn everything. I will learn every position in this place. I will outwork you. I guarantee it. 
That's me. Destroy you. I will. I will. I get really ruthless. I have a lot of masculine energy around this, and I, I really, really did. I was like, I'm going to make stuff happen. And I tripled my income in three years as a you know 25 year old. I you know there's yeah, and I was like value, 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 right? Because that's what my that's what my workplace told me. That's what my whole that's what I I grew up in South Carolina. That's what my whole environment told me is that you achieve, you're valuable. You do this, you're valuable everything about it and especially women wow. and then you add in especially people of color and then you add in and then we go into our last talk so if you haven't seen the last talk you can go back to that one because that was pretty good about oh. privilege we get into privilege and and that sort of thing but yeah. click back i just i'm just trying to sit with my thoughts here because my brain is racing and i remember when i sort of i started coming to the idea that i was measuring my work by my worth my worth by my work, mm -hmm. um, like about a year and a half ago, even though I had been in this pattern for like mm. 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I realized it, my friend who's an LC LCSW, um, she was like, well, yeah, you're defining your worth by your work. Like it was so easy for her to see. <laughs> she wasn't me and she could, but she could see me, you know, and it's hard to see the forest for the trees when you're mm -hmm. in it because you just think that like, this is your life and this is what you're supposed to do. And you're supposed to want and, and stress and worry, but constantly be hustling even when you're not working. Like I just moved from New York City, y'all. I've been there for four years. I worked my ass off to get the That's apartment that I had, uh, the business that I had, the representation that I had, and now have again, because I didn't give up on myself, um, mm. you know, and, and it was a lot. And you don't even realize the stress that your body's taking on. You don't even understand sometimes until you walk away. And um, someone just said, even as a mom, mm -hmm. A good stay at mom, good a good stay at home mom, but have a successful career. Yes, there's stigmas everywhere. Jesus, what, what and how you have to be, and it's exactly what society tells us. Thank you, Kylie, for that comment. Um, and we we are breaking ceilings like no other in this last year. And COVID, as we all know, put a massive neon light on all of us. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of changes are being made. Um, but really, like, no one can come to that realization for you that you are needing to probably change something because of your pattern. And we try so much to um, not share our vulnerabilities sometimes. Mm. I mean, we could cry, whatever. But, like, I'm talking about, like, the true vulnerability of letting people see you. Mm. And I deal with it in my acting all the time. And my, my coach, Josh Pice, who actually just agreed to come on the show later this year, he's an incredible actor. He's like the actor. Awesome. You just see him in everything. And then you're like, wait, what's his name? And then you see him and you're like, wait, no, I know that guy. Like, okay, cool. I'm he's the working actor that does everything. And he's incredible. And he always says, you know, like, don't act. No one wants to see you act. Mm. They want to see you come and show you however you are in that moment. Like a few minutes ago, you just said you were nervous and you were sweating, but yeah. you didn't try to shake it off. No, you, 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 you worked with that energy. Yeah. And that's how you succeed is you work with that energy. Nerves are a good thing. Fear is a great thing. Hmm. That is an indicator that something needs to change. And also fear is, is with the reason we have fear is so it protects the body from not dying. Like, it's a it's a response. It's an mm -hmm. auto neurological response, so we don't hurt ourselves or get into trouble, right? Yeah, and and I, I talk about this all the time in my um, membership community with my clients. I'm like, your brain has no idea of a bear coming at you, yeah. and and you being or late for work, <laughs> or like you you right. just like the, your brain has no idea. It just it just information, and it does. It goes right into unsafe. And so then we, um, we hide, we, we shut down or whatever we do, we overwork, like whatever our thing is, um, we do that. And I think that what you said was so interesting um, because you mentioned 2020 and I think that it was a, a shit year and it was, but not, not totally because we were no longer one distracted. We were not busy. Um, we weren't some of us were working hard and, and I, I worked the entire time in the pandemic. I understand. Like I can I speak from that place the entire time. Yeah. And we worked, so we Creating overworked, <laughs> right. And we started talking about this stuff. And so look at all the change that happened because we were no longer overworking and we started to look to each other and say, wait, you too. Wait, I don't feel right about this. You too. 
Me too. Okay. So let's talk about this because there's some, there's some power in that. And I think it was Sheena who said she brought up Brene Brown and this, this movement, you know, she started this, you know, over 13 years ago is when she wrote her first book. Um, And so she's been, you know, hustling and grinding and bringing this conversation to light. And she says that shame does not exist when you put language around it. She's a hundred percent right. Say that again. Shame cannot exist when lang- when you put language around it. Give me an example. So like um, you, you know, me saying, oh, I'm nervous about it. Like I'm getting really intense or really <laughs> excited or nervous. Somebody's probably sitting in this room feeling the same way, but they're ashamed about it. So if I don't yeah. say, hey, I'm feeling this way. Or if I don't say, you know what? Um, it really, it really fucking sucked when I lost my mom. It really did. And if I didn't ever speak up and say that, the people around me, I would live in shame and feel like I was inferior, like I wasn't shaking it off or I wasn't moving through it, right? Yeah. But because I speak it, number one, it is my truth. It is my story. And it has no longer hold on me. But then the woman next to me, just because I speak to women most of the time, the woman next to me also says, hey, you too? I've been there. You yeah. know how many people I meet and the first thing I know about them is they lost their parent? Wow. It's incredible. It's incredible. And Before I think Before you that's, say something? Yeah. I mean, we, we will just connect. It will have a vibe. And then we find out, oh, you too? Yeah, me too. And you just have this essence. It, it just is. And I think that that's what this um, shame only exists in the darkness. And when you mentioned community and you mentioned this platform, that's what you're doing is you're, you're shining that light on, no, no, this isn't just your experience. We are here. We are together. And we're going to talk about it. And that's what the Brave Ones Club, if, you, if you're not sure of me, you're following because you love Lauren, which I don't blame you. <laughs> Um, moving bravely is that place where we will go into the darkness and I will hold space and we will talk about the things that no one else talks about because That's we know true. that we need it. Yeah. And I think that, that you just brought that. So what, what an incredible, um, you know, bow that we had, uh, after all the work of like decades of work. And then finally we were able to slow down, look to each other and say, yeah, you two are, right. we're banding together and we're making change yeah. right now. And we did, and we continue to have a, you know, work to do but we're still doing it. Um, and now we know who's, who to, you know, bond, like battle with. Um, so totally. I, just, I just appreciated that you brought that up in this context. Well, I think, um, obviously the last four years were really intense. No matter what side you're on, it was intense. It's very intense. And beyond, that's not even the correct word. Um, and storytelling defines culture Mm -hmm. and what we're doing what i'm doing what i see people doing on clubhouse is sharing the art of storytelling and sharing the power in every single story because every single story is important and valuable and will touch someone else we're all energy we're all made of the same thing we're all made of stardust it's a real thing i'm not making this up um so it says we are all made of stardust. Stop it. Okay, Shut keep up. keep going. Keep going. This Tell me, like- can't make that up. Oh my god! <laughs> it's because the moon is in Leo and I am a Leo. So there I'm is a full moon tonight. The whole it's, we it's don't in get Leo it. tonight. The wolf that's, moon. Look at that's, you. That's me. Look at you um, showing up. Look at you. Look at you. I'm proud of you. Girl. Hey, let's talk about storytelling for a second because I think it yes, ties in. Let's go back. I think it does because I think that you, one, because of your background, because of your career and your history, and because I tell stories from a different angle, yeah. um, I think it's really important that these people don't know how to tell their own stories, right? Like we, we really don't. It is an art form and you said it so naturally, yeah. but I, I think that I don't know if everybody caught that. And it is so true because the reason that we have morning rituals and the reason that we have to get up every morning and remind ourselves of who the fuck we are is because we're telling our stories to ourselves and we're writing them constantly. Every day is a new chapter. Every day is a new page, right? So you have to wake up and say and remind yourself, I know who I am. I already am this person. Even if you know you want to be that person, you already are. And really tell your story instead of the negative imposter syndrome because that's this imposter syndrome is just a story that you're telling yourself. Yeah, too. it's a loop. Yeah, it's a loop. Yeah. So I just wondered if you could speak to like, how did, how did you stumble into like actually telling your story? You know, you could act and, and write and tell other people's stories. Sure. Or give a platform for it, but you tell your story too a lot. I think um, just something that's like on my heart right now is it's so crazy. I went to this play 
before the shutdown. And at the end of the play, the man says, he, he addresses the audience and he says, I want to tell you my biggest secret. And we're like, wait a minute, he broke the fourth wall. Like the fourth wall hadn't been broken. They were just acting and doing their thing. I wish I remember the name of the play. I'm so embarrassed. Um, and he said, my biggest secret is that I want everyone to love me. And when he said that, I just lost it. And I was like, that's my secret. Mm. That's my secret. I need to feel validated by certain men in relationships. I need to feel validated by bosses. I need to feel validated by friends in mm. order to define my worth, to make sure I'm enough, to make sure I'm doing enough, to make sure I'm going the right places, to make sure no one's mad at me so I can sleep at night, to make sure that my legacy will be here, to make sure I'm not forgotten. Mm. My second biggest fear. Mm -hmm. And just like when that happened, when I heard that, that was sort of, I was already sort of doing the work in therapy and stuff, but I really realized how deep it needed to go. And a lot of people right here are, are speaking, like they're so glad that you said that and you put language. I'm just going to like tear up. Yeah, you it put language happens. to the shame. And that's what that, that's what that looks like is putting language to this deep, dark secret, deep, dark yeah. secret. Um, mine is being valued and worthy. I, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm sure many of you could probably, if you feel comfortable, you could drop yours too. If you, if you feel the space and the movement, um, the yeah. energy, um, where it's that space for you, if you want to put it here. And I just, um, parts of me knows where that comes from. And parts of me knows that I don't want to put like too much light on it because that's not going to make it better. I, we are, I was having a conversation on clubhouse today about pain and Kylie said being forgotten. Being forgotten. I feel you. Damn. Retired wow. people pleaser. Yes, Rebecca. Oh, and I still people please. And there's nothing wrong with doing these behaviors. We're human beings. This is going to happen. And it's something you battle every day. You don't just get cured from it. You know, yeah. and, and I mean, that I love Rebecca. And I mean that with respect, like, it is something that is a process just like life is right. Mm -hmm. You can't just shirk it off. Negative thoughts are always going to come. They're just, that's just the way life is. Mm -hmm. That is the way, <laughs> nay. Family, please. Family, please are, yes. Be specific. Yeah, Come on, I, I know there's people in this, I know people in this chat that would be like, mm-hmm. I knew there was something else there, Rebecca. Um, but I love that. Yeah, literally. literally. I want to read what some people are saying. Being so validated and liked. Literally um, lose sleep when people are mad at me, especially when I don't know why. Oh, my God. Sonora. Girl, we can have a whole conversation about that. But but just so I bring it back, because when yeah. people watch this recording, they're not going to see the comments. True. Um, you know, hi, Susa, welcome. Um, I, th I think it's this, um, it goes back to yeah. this conversation. It's a conversation every single day. You know who we don't talk to? We talk to everybody else. But we, lit we do not talk to ourselves. So when we, when these you know, these reactions, that's really what it is. Like reactions uh, come up and we, we respond, you know, to people in a way that we then feel guilty over, or, you know, start to shame ourselves over later is because we don't know, we don't truly know where they came from. And I think what you just said is so important because being in constant gratitude and prayer and meditation or hope, whatever it is, conversation with yeah. yourself, you start to realize that, oh, I am me and I'm grateful and I'm going to impact people who are like me. You start to realize that, that you're like, oh, I, this is, this is who I am. And I'm, I'm really, um, this is, no, there is no good nor bad. This is just, this is me making it through this life. Um, and I think that's really important. And yeah, I just, the conversation pieces, I, I tell my clients all the time, I'm like, you're going to literally speak to yourself by name. And you know this, cause I know you also, you know, know this is very helpful. Um, yeah. Speak to yourself out loud. Stop. I'm like, get out of here. Get out of here. I'm and like, speak. Some days, some days I'm like, Lauren, get it together, girl. <laughs> yes. You know, but but also I'm super, I'm an HSP, highly sensitive person. I'm empathetic. I'm intense. Sometimes I'm completely 
like this <laughs> when I've gone to my limit. Um, and you know, I want to do a conversation too on Clubhouse about saying no mm. and how empowering it is to say fuck no or, or even fuck yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the parallels in that. But I don't want to digress too much. I, I really appreciate all the comments and people like putting it out there because there's something freeing when you admit what your secret is to people. Yes. I'm not doing this for a following. I'm here to build a community. Mm -hmm. And I mean that. And when I started this show, everyone has fantasies of it getting picked up and you doing these things and all that. I would be a liar if I said that I didn't think about those things and brand deals and all that. That stuff's coming now. But when I started the show, I literally knew that I needed this show so I wouldn't mentally go mm -hmm. into a deep depression because I need people, because we need people, because we need human touch. Look, I'll tell you right now, I haven't had sex since January 3rd, 2020. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. You know why? Because I bet someone else out there is dealing with the same fucking shit. So let's just get real and get over ourselves mm -hmm. and talk about the that sucks. It sucks. Yeah. I'm not ashamed of that. Oh yeah, we talk about sex and moving in the Brave Ones Club all the time. <laughs> so yeah. We come and and not just between partners, but very intimacy. We talk about intimacy and also just intimacy between people, but also with ourselves. Um, we yeah. don't use the word intimacy. You with... can say masturbation on my show, honey. Oh yeah. But I, I mean, even yeah, masturbation for sure. But it's also even beyond that. I literally mean intimacy. Yeah. When you oh. have intimacy with yourself, you actually do, um, go through hardship with yourself. You actually do like you, you truly love yourself. And so it's just really interesting that we've left out intimacy altogether. We, we do not receive pleasure very well. We think it's, again, it's tied to this conversation about like, well, I didn't earn it. Wow. Okay. Dive deeper in that right now, please. Right? So like I, um, I didn't earn rest. I don't get to stop and, and, and go for a walk because I didn't earn it. I, I didn't get enough done. I, I, do, I don't I work get to all the eat time. that cookie because I sat down all day. You mm -hmm. still need calories, bitch. Yep. Come on. It, it, is, I, it is so tied to to earning and working for it. And I'm just here to, here to say that I, 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 I really refuse to live that life anymore. Cause I, I was in a really dark place. Um, I've been through the body, me and you, that's what, one of those things that we related on early on was like, I've been through the ringer. I had beat the shit out of my body internally in, in my head. I have done that. And there, there's just, you realize that, okay, you know what? I'm not going to be 60 and still beating the shit out of myself about my body. That this thing, this thing that carries my soul and my brain and my heart to the world, I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat it up anymore. And guess what? It has a shelf life. It is finite, but my soul, my spirit, it's not. So I'm going to pour into that and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to receive and be, be in that space because I spent 28, 29 years in the other space where pouring into a finite thing. I just, our souls and our brains and our hearts, this body is a vessel. Man, I like a good dramatic pause. <laughs> Me, too. Me too. I do. I think um, I'm just feeling today's conversation. I'm like, so grateful. I, it, we're all like a loss for words over here. Um, if anybody in the audience has questions, please hit the little question mark at the bottom. Uh, this is Quarantine But Cute. I'm your host, Lauren Aparicio. And I created the show to stay sane through the pandemic. And we have so many exciting guests this year. But Lauren is somebody who has come on now the fourth time, I believe, on the show. Um, third or fourth time. I think it's we've fourth. Already, we've, yeah, I don't even know anymore. You're like the resident, like life transition coach <laughs> i know and you i we could yeah i i really have to say that the the you have brought me along with your journey of you just showing up and showing up and you're like you're gonna be on my show and i'm like yes okay i'm gonna be on your show i have no idea what i'm doing and i don't script either so i love you for that because i just like it's got to be intuitive and it's got to be a vibe and i think that we have grown in such a relationship and if you go back to watch episode one to now yeah it's 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 bone chilling of just like how I have cold chills look I know I I just I don't know how I won I didn't earn you you just are for me I again I didn't earn this this is just us showing up and being like 
this. This is yeah. what we do. We, we don't have to earn this. And relationships shouldn't be earned. And community is not earned. It's just the willingness to show up and, and be, with, be with people who are um, hurting. And also be there when we're joyous. Because we've laughed a lot, too. We'll we say, have. Oh, no, we have. I have. Oh, I have a thought. I have a thought. Okay. I wanted go, to talk go, about. Go. We'll come. Yeah. So Clubhouse. Just for a minute. Clubhouse is such an incredible platform for you to, to um, like, rattle off who you are. Like you were saying, like you owned who you are because you have to say it so much on the Clubhouse app. And so like, I remember being like, uh, but, uh, I, uh, I don't know who I am. And then by, by the third time I did it, I was nailing it. And I was like, ooh. And then I like landed stuff with it. And just like, just from my intro. And I was like, it's, it's you claiming who you are. Yeah. You can hear it. You can feel it. So I just wanted to use Clubhouse as an, as an example to like really say like claim who you are. Well, I love that. And you look, if I'm in a room and I'm being an active listener, which is something I try to do, but if someone calls me up to speak, I better make sure that what I'm saying is important to me first, right? Because I mm -hmm. need to make sure that like what I'm saying is sure, authentic, authentic. That word gets used like a hundred fucking times a day on that app. Um, <laughs> but also just like, I mean, come on, like, pedal, like let's call it out. Like it does. I think people just want to be heard, you know? And I think what the difference is on that app is you have to wait to speak, not are you waiting to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, there are two types of people, right? Listeners and people who are waiting to speak. Yes. Right. So, but, but on this app, you're forced to be an active listener and it is helping me tremendously because whereas I'll get excited, raise my hand because I always have something to say. Um, and I, I believe I add value. value. I'm not like talking shit to myself, but I'm just saying like, you know, I, I definitely take more time to really hear everyone in the room. Even if someone calls me up before I speak, because I really, I know Rob's like potty mouth. I do have a potty mouth. Um, I do think that hearing people's voices and not seeing their face, you can hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Like that's just the bottom line. You can hear the truth before you can see it. And it's incredible. And, and that is why so many people are connecting because yeah. it's the voice, just like we're a vibration. The, the, the voice is such a massive vibration. Why do you think podcasts are mm -hmm. so big? I was actually one of the first podcast DJs ever in 2006. And I, did, I remember like the first report came out from our boss at the time I worked for this station called BreakthroughRadio.com. And I, I had to like look at the numbers again, but he's like, oh yeah, here's the ratings. And I'm like looking at it and I have like millions of listeners. This is before Sirius XM. Oh I was like, okay. But what's funny is I didn't care. I was more concerned about like what kind of content I was bringing to my listeners so they would come back every week. I swear, I was working for free the first six months. And it, it's just like, at the end of the day, everybody wants to get paid. Everybody wants to be heard. Everyone wants to find their voice and share what they have to share. But like, it gets exhausting being in competition. It gets exhausting trying to find the words sometimes, right? Mm. Of, or the right words of what to say. And sometimes you just got to sit the fuck down <laughs> and you have to listen. You have to listen. I'm saying that to myself as I'm saying it to you as well out there. And I am learning so much in um, so many ways. This show has been tremendous. And um, I'm grateful. I'm just, I'm like, whatever. Money's great. Abundance is awesome. That's mm -hmm. great. But I do this show because community is what's going to save our culture, our planet, everything. Yes. A hundred percent. I, you know, my tagline, I say this is one of my mantras is community builds confidence. You cannot truly produce change and go the long run without this community connection. You just can't because you have to know someone's in your corner. Um, and so that's what we are here to create is, you know, having conversations that creates community and new connections. I think that me and you are both purposed with, with that in such a different, like incredible way in my yeah. whole life. I just remember my whole life. I was so concerned about belongingness and for not so much for me, but for everyone else, I was the, the person who was like, come in, come in, come in, belong. I want you to belong. And I just know that that's just a life theme. And so then 
you know, it's no surprise that I create Moving Bravely and have a you know, membership platform. You know, I'm not the one who's going out there, you know, pushing all the one-on-one -on -one coaching and trying to make a business out of this. I, I do it for free. But membership yeah. is first. Community is first. Community is priority because it is going to ripple further. Yeah. It just is. Um, and it's not about me. It's about the, it's about the, the message and the movement. Well, it's like you can make money from anybody, anywhere, anytime, but why don't you love what you do and mm. create a platform that's true from it? Like that, that's what this whole show has manifested itself into. Like I said, is, is just, it started out as a fun thing to stay in touch with people. And then some really meaningful stuff started happening. Mm. And I was like, Ooh, I got to keep going with this. And, and, and look at it. We're here almost a year later since the first show, which I believe was like March 16th. We're still in the same place. It's sad, but it's also like we're keeping going because we need to. Yeah. We don't have another choice. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit here and be have a pity party or be miserable about it. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to inspire people to keep going and to talk about when it's bad. Don't hide that shit. I want to see you cry. Mm -hmm. I just cried like three times on my show. I, just, I met Rob. Rob said, you met me. I met Rob, <laughs> who's married, by the way. God, I'm always attracting unavailable men. Oh, look at me. <laughs> but no, um, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. But so to bring it back to, you know, we're talking about morning ritual, talking about imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with the overwhelm of the fact that we're still here? Many of us still yeah. quarantining. And then, and then, you know, for, for this inundation of like creation, I've got to be on Instagram. I've got to be on TikTok. I've got to be on the, it's, I've got to be on Clubhouse. It's so much for so many people, even me who have chosen to spend time on it. I still mm -hmm. have to step away. So what are some of your great tips before we go about just battling overwhelm in general? Excellent, excellent, excellent question. I had great coaches there at the end of the year, especially like leading into the season of Clubhouse. I, um, it is know thyself, <laughs> like know yourself. And I mean, know what actually makes you energized and what actually zaps your energy and what sucks the life out of you. Um, I do not get on Facebook. I am not on Facebook. I, I, I'm on it, but I'm really I'm, not on it I'm because really I don't it. like it. So not on Twitter. I'm on Instagram and Clubhouse. And that's it. And so I just I narrowed, <laughs> yeah, I just narrowed that down. I just narrowed it down. And I said, you know what? It is only what in what I bring, like you said, brings me joy because I know I'm going to show up authentically throwing that word yeah. out there. What that means is that you're, you are actually fully showing up as yourself and it's, it's yeah. without, it's so natural. It's not, you know, it's not a word that you can fake. It's just not. So that whole, like, I think you said earlier, fake it till you make it. I'm like, mm -mm. you just gonna have to live it. You just gonna have to well, live it. Live yeah, totally. it. Totally. You know? I'm not. Uh, well, that's back to the imposter syndrome thing. I also believe that if you're transitioning into something new, don't worry about that. You're not an expert. Just start. Exactly. And just I think. Start. And I think that that's the other thing is keep it simple. So like keep yeah. it focused and keep it simple because you, we try to go out and do these really, really like mountaintop things and we totally skip the valleys and we totally skip the way, the path on the way up there. And we know we are old enough at this point. I think all the people following probably have lived a couple decades at this point. And you know that the most memorable moments are the in-betweens. You know that. So be in the in-betweens with yourself, speak to yourself, keep it simple and keep my coach, Natasha Hemingway, she's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant sales coach. Um, but she's more than that because she just helped, she, she helped me just focus on keep the main thing, the main thing. And that is not just <gasps> a business. That's not just a business thing. It's life. Keep the main thing, the main thing, find out what's your why do that. Come on. What you got? I love when stuff goes back. That one, I was waiting to speak a little bit. Okay. Um, um, I was so proud of you. You're like, <laughs> yes. But me and you were so visual. We're like, me, I have something. <laughs> um, that was the Larry King quote we were talking yes, about. Yes, I was hoping you would bring that up. How funny. And he was saying so many people who start interviewing people at a young age look at like Barbara Walters and Larry King and Oprah and yes. try to emulate. And you have to remember um, not what you're doing, but why you're doing it. What is your why? Mm. You know, and I say that on in my side business. I say that with acting. What is my why? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm, for acting, I'm an empathetic person that loves to feel emotion so intensely and share that authenticity on the screen so someone feels it at home. That's why I act. I yeah. love that. I get off on that. I share that. 
I know that it helps other people. I know that it helps me, helps me with my own ego. There's so many other things. And I don't mean ego in the pleasure sense. I mean, ego and dropping right. it, knowing that I can connect, like doing something good for others. And I feel the same way with my side business. I feel the same way with this. But I also, you know, I've, I've never tried to emulate anybody else. I never have. And that's probably why I felt, except for like when I was in high school, I wanted to be Gwen Stefani. Okay. Anyway. Fair. Fair. <laughs> But like, I've always done my own thing and felt very alone because of that for a really mm -hmm. long time. Like, am I on the right path? Do I need to continue on this path? Do I need to go somewhere else? And then what you just said too about um, uh, um, um, like going back to the main thing that you do. Yes. I have so many thoughts. It's like, I know uh, we have five minutes. Oh my gosh. I know. Well, I think it's going to extend. Instagram has been extending, but we'll see. Okay. Um, but we'll wrap it up. But basically, I was doing so much and I was trying to do a podcast, my keep going podcast, which is my mm. motto on, um, on Clubhouse. And I was like, you know what? I'm finding more joy in my speed dating room. So I scrapped the podcast. Yeah. And I was like, who, who's holding me accountable? Is it Lauren? Is it my audience? No, it's me. Yep. It's me. I'm answering to me. I've got to make that choice for me. And so my main gig is this show. What yeah. I'm doing right now is this show. And I am building a badass community of people who want to be seen and heard and loved and cry with and and laugh with and like we're all here for it we need it we need the human connection we need the community we need to cultivate true stories and mm -hmm. share those stories yes and we need to support each other in doing so like no one no one um gets hurt by by another woman winning right you know we need to be collaborating there's enough of the pie to go around mm. the, there's there's so much that you said that i want to touch on one Amen. Hallelujah. Preach it. Say it again, honey boo. When you talk about there's enough room, there's so much abundance and there's a lot of stuff. I help a lot of women who I'll never, you'll never see my name. And I don't want that. That's, that's part of my thing is like, I want to be the springboard, the launch pad, the person who's just like, I see what you have. Only you have this and you not doing this pains me because the world doesn't get to have it. So yeah. we're going to do this together. You're going to own it and you're going to go create in your new unique way because only you can. And that's a blip. We don't have that. What if you could impact a million people, but you're, you're holding back. No, I won't stand for it. I just can't do that. That's just not in my nature. It yeah. pains me. So that's where I'm like, you are so unique. Go do your thing in this quarantine, but cute thing. Nobody did it. Nobody did what you did. And I was like, I'm so proud of you because we want to veer when the new trendy flashy things comes up and everybody's yeah. on there. Girl, I'm on there one day. I'm on Clubhouse one day a week. It's to host my room and it's the Sunday Scaries room and it's a Sunday night and that's it. That's it. Because I was like, main thing, main thing. Show up in authenticity. Yeah. I don't have the energy. Again, I'm a frontline worker. I, I was like, I got to narrow it in. Yeah. The abundance is coming no matter if I'm on there every day or not. I'm going to show up when I show up and it's going to be damn good and go over the top like I do and that's how I'm going to do it. But that's Love that it. conversation with me, knowing me and knowing how I can serve and best impact this world, right? So, oh, what it, edit, 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 less is more. That's the note I've gotten from every edit, acting edit, coach edit, 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 and every single person I've ever met. They're like, Lauren, you don't have to try to be anybody else. You're just you. And all you have to do is show up. And that's a gift that you don't have to do that much. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm in a chaos. I'm in a drama. And my acting <laughs> teacher is always like, dude, all you have to do is show up and say the words. It's so easy. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you that you think that that's all I have to do. And then I had to start looking at myself and going, well, wait, maybe he's right. Yes. And, oh my gosh. and you know, just having those kind of supporter supporters uh, in my life, like Josh, like you, um, like my new friends on Clubhouse, like it's wild, but you're right. Like I'm only now moderating on certain days. Mm -hmm. I, I scrapped the things that weren't bringing me joy and, and, and started things that um, I didn't know were going to bring me joy. Right. So where do you want your energy to go? Yeah. That's what you have to figure out. And that's why I implore everybody watching this show. Where do you want your energy to go? And play, play with it. Play, yeah. have fun. Like you said it, you've said it 14 times on this show. Like you have fun. We have, have fun. fun. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> if that's anything that we can say is play, have fun, explore, do not yeah. stop. That's what this life is for. So try things and then cut the things that don't work. Yep. And I'm doing we this could. show a year later because I love it and I have fun. And I implore any creator out there, don't worry about when you're going to come up with some 
amazing idea or whatever, just start doing something that makes you feel good and you never know what it's going to turn into. So with that, I just want to thank you, Lauren McGlamory of Moving Bravely, coming here into this space again to start out season two of Quarantine But Cute. I'm so grateful. What an amazing ride. And next week, we've got some uh, food and drink. So you're going to have to stay tuned for who's going to come on the show. And you're going to be back this season. Let's oh, just yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. It was an honor. I love you. Love you all. Mwah. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye, you all. Have a great night.